Hi guys and welcome on Friday again today and joining us for another Adobe Creative Collab. And today with us we have the amazing and talented Joey Yu. Hello. Hello. Hi. How Thanks are you, Joey? Um, I'm good. I'm. I think you can. Might you might hear it a little bit, but I'm a bit ill. But we're gonna make it work. I'm gonna plow through it. Yeah. What happens at this time of the year, anyways? Everyone. And gets everyone comes down with the winter. Yeah, it's just such cold. random weather. And but anyways, we've done the British thing talking about the weather. Let's move you on to, to the next thing. You have <laughs> you to. Have you to. do <laughs> have to, don't you? So today we have an exciting hour planned for you, and we're gonna try something different. Well, different for. Or Joey, really, because yeah. um, uh, her usual style of drawing, not style, approach to drawing is, you want to describe it actually? Yeah, so um, for those of you that don't know, I am a artist that works primarily in illustration and animation, um, a bit of everything, as you can see, there's a picture somewhere. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I mainly use paper and pencils, crayons, a bit of everything to make an image, a capture of. Um, a location that I see around me and I, I want to make it last forever. Um, but rarely do I do it in digital form. So essentially, kind of you combine a lot of media together, but this yeah. time, so this time we have set a bit of a challenge for you, haven't yes. we? Yes, this is the first time that I'm making an image all on the iPad. Exclusively on the yeah. iPad. And she will be using the um, our new painting and drawing app, Adobe Fresco. Um, and we'll be going through that today. Um, we will not be going into a deep dive on all the functionality of the app because we have done a live stream previously to that. So feel free to check that out if you have um, um, any questions. But also about questions, I'll be here to answer your questions live. So please do type in and ask any questions. There's also a group of people behind the scenes which, which will be doing that on the go. So without further ado, um, shall we start actually? So yes, actually before yeah. we start, would you want to tell us a little bit about yourself in yeah. terms of where you're from, how you got into illustration and drawing, mm -hmm. all of that. Um, <laughs> so I was, I have always been interested in art and making artwork since I was really little. And so I think illustration and um, making artwork in, in that sort of way, animation too. It's one of the easiest forms for people to see and understand. Mm. So I think it was natural for me to make work in that way. And I really like storytelling. So, nice. Yeah. So in terms of your artwork, like for example, using the this lovely piece that we've got here behind us, mm -hmm. um, how would you describe it in a way? Uh, very organic, mm. I would say, colorful like word, yeah. and um, sketch-like. I make all the work quite quickly, so yeah. Is that kind of like your approach though, that kind of oh, the, the speed that you create your pieces, is that the reason you kind of set yourself out to do that? Yeah. Does that reflect your, in the certain approach of your art? Yeah. Anyway? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> so, yeah. yes, yes, everything is yes. See, we're agreeing on a lot of things. And without further ado, do you want to tell us a little bit of what you're going to do today with us? Okay, then? so today's challenge is all on the iPad. Um, normally, if I do di digital work, I draw it in hand mm -hmm. um, and then scan it and then I color it on, on the computer. So this is the first time I'm drawing on the iPad. So let me just, will it re read my face? No. <laughs> I'm going to type in my password. Hope no one's looking. <laughs> cool. So, um, um, yeah. So, what we're going to do is open a new document. And basically, I'm referring to this image here. Normally, I draw on the go and I draw what's around me. But obviously, we're in a studio today, so I'm using a reference image. This is just in a, like a cafe. And I think what I really like doing is taking a very ordinary image and uh, this would be, you know, something you would look at once really quickly if it's a photograph. But with an illustration, you would make something that lasts a lot longer. So um, I'm going to turn it into a drawing underneath. So have you always been all about these little snapshots of life? Yeah. Things like that? Yeah. Yeah. And, and interesting, we'll delve that a bit further into the into this session. But it's always, I love what you just said about the fact that, you know, these are images, pictures and ideas that you would not normally look at in real life, but you create a snapshot out of them. Mm. And then do you kind of take a, of a surrealistic approach? Like, do you change what you do? Like? Yeah, um, so obviously you, I don't have that in front of me right now, but say I am in the cafe and I'm drawing, um, the colors are so much more vivid in real life. Mm. And say in the, in the photo, I've got these leaves that are outside that 
would draw my attention first. Fantastic. Um, and I, the wind would be blowing through it. And it's so much more exciting when you draw from real life. So I'll, I'll sketch that down. Mm. Um, but from a photo, that doesn't necessarily jump out straight mm. away. Um, yeah, so you're under the influence of all of your senses. It's interesting, I love that, like how together the senses bring that picture all together. Mm. So is that where you're gonna start? How, how okay, so, start now? Uh, yes. So, shall I talk about my great discovery? Yes, please. Of my paper discovery. Well, go for it, please. <laughs> so, one thing that I thought would be a fun thing to do mm -hmm. is, um, I have here some different colored bits of paper Textures. that I brought along with me. Mm. Um, one thing I like to do when I'm drawing is collage mm. and use paper. Um, How do you usually do it? So I'd like cut it out okay. and, and just glue it down. Oh, that's quite But cool. once you've done that, then it's stuck forever and you can't move it around. But on a, on a computer, you can, on an iPad. Um, so what I would say that you could do, I've already scanned it, um, taken photos of it, but what you can do is use the this um, tool Menu. here and then use a the camera. camera photo. You can also upload some stuff from the Creative Cloud files if you have saved them there. Yeah. Um, or even if you have taken the picture But there you previously. go, look, I literally just yeah. took a photo of it earlier. Yeah, oh, I love um, that blue, it's such a it's nice It's a really nice color. Blue, yeah. um, and so if I get the reference photo, Sorry. So um, say I'm going to use this color for the man, for a man in the background. What I'll do is I'll use the little lasso tool and I will draw the shape of his jacket like that. And then I'm going to mask it, convert it. And then there you go. So now I have the shape of my jumper in a, in a real life texture okay yeah so this is kind of really copying like as you said what you would do in real life but just completely doing it digitally then yeah so um let me do another one while she does that i'm just gonna an answer a quick question um kai doshin he said as an avid android user i would like to ask when will this program be available to android devices we are looking into that the first the next batch of devices that will be available on will be surface the next one hopefully is android at some point next year so hopefully that answers your question so you've just done another one um uh, that's excellent yeah there we go and I think this is the great thing so if say I was doing this by collage um, in in handmade you know doing a, a, a actual drawing yeah. la, la, la. Um, <laughs> then once I've cut it out I can't change the shape of it and I can't change the size of it whereas now I've got my little um, pen so I can move it around and position the people where I want them to be. That's quite exciting. I guess it allows you in a way to uh, kind of be a bit more creative freely, not yeah. to worry about, you know, I have to commit to this or I might do something to a piece of artwork mm -hmm. that might ruin it. Although in a way you never ruin an artwork to you because no. it's always an evolution <laughs> of what yeah. you're building. As you can see now, she, um, um, Joey has me shifting layers around, so you'll notice on the right-hand side is that you have a layer system in place, which is very similar to what we have in Photoshop and several of our other apps. Um, uh, so that could be a really that sort of makes it really easy for you guys to pick up Fresco if you wanted to do that. Um, oh, what, what have you got going over here now? Um, I am drawing in the background, so this is basically my frame. I really like looking at frames in drawings and this is basically the window so if i quickly show you on the photo that's yeah. my reference um you've got a lovely window there and i'm not necessarily using it as um this is the rule book and i must draw the window like so but mm. i'm using it as sort of inspiration so also i noticed there you're using one of our exciting and yeah. exclusive live brushes do you want to explain yeah, yeah i can it's explain power it yeah <laughs> actually could you mind also whilst i do it can you zoom in a little bit <laughs> yeah, yeah, show yeah. people that kind of water effect that it does yeah you can see you can that. see it blend a little yeah. bit and even i think wait 
This is the, the flow? flow? Yeah, 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 flow. So these are our live brushes. So these live brushes are powered by Sensor, our AI. And what it really does is try to kind of mimic and replicate real life media. In this case, Joey has chosen to use the watercolor brush and it will allow us to kind of get the nice natural random flow that water does in real life. There's other live brushes. At the moment, too, uh, we have oil as well, which is a very different medium from watercolors. It's a complete opposite, oh, really. Um, and uh, in later future, hopefully, we'll have um, some other new live brushes coming to Fresco. Speaking of brushes, actually, guys, just one, just one thing worth mentioning. It, it, the Fresco allows you to load up all the Photoshop brushes. And if you have a Creative Cloud account and you log in with the same account that you use in Photoshop on your desktop and on your Fresco, they will lo load as well, okay? Can I do a magic trick now? Please, show us the magic trick. <laughs> I love magic tricks. So um, this is one thing that I think is amazing, mm -hmm. is the um, lock transparency tool. Mm -hmm. So I'll turn that on and I've got a different color now on the live brush. Yeah. I'm going to drag it really big. Yeah. And um, I'm on the same layer, but as you can see, I'm coloring in at the top, but it's not going onto the, um, the background. How cool is that? It's, it's just staying in the parameter that I've already set out. Exactly. So the, the lock transparency is what it does. Because she's done the first kind of sketch with the green, she, uh, she kind of, as she said, locked it down. So basically now, anything that she does on top of that would just be painted within the confines of that. That yeah. means she can do huge brush strokes without worrying that it's going to spill over onto the white bits. If she was doing this in real life, she would have to use a finer brush to get those little um, details, details yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, as we can see as well with the live brush, you can look, if you zoom into the into one of the bases there, you can see how lovely the kind of the colors are starting. You, yeah, you've got you a know. little bit of light blender. Yeah. And now let's get in our person at the front. We're going to reveal that's another paper texture. And as you can see, I really like when it's a bit crumply, a bit messy. Because it gives it a bit more real life feel to it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very interesting uh, um, approach, actually, of how now what we're seeing. In previous examples, we completely painted everything. Well, we have, we're still doing this, and actually, in Fresco. But it's fascinating seeing how you can combine real-life elements, e.g. photos and, in this case, textures, mm -hmm. bring them into Fresco and together build a, uh, an image using that. So once again, um, Joey has used the lasso tool, created her shape, and she's used, she used the mask tool again kind of cut out the desired shape. Yeah, that's my person who's going to go at the front. Cool. And I think that I'm happy with that. Fantastic, cool. So you can kind of see the, the image coming together, I think. Do you want to show it to them again, just for a quick reference? What's that, the image? The image yeah, yeah, there you go. So this is kind of where we are, where the SO Joey is building that. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I, I, love, I love this, I mean, defining your style, um, if, I, if we look, for example, at uh, previous um, art movements and things like that, mm -hmm. it reminds me very impressionistic for me from the impression movement. What do you Interesting. think? Interesting. Um, yeah, I think that's a huge inspiration to me. I really like traditional, older painters who, uh, what's it called, when they go out into the landscape and they, they set up their canvas. And play there. Yeah. yeah, and they draw, you know, the sea and the, yes. and the trees, and I like that. It's a, and I think that just for a bit of background on the Impressionist movement, when it came to be, actually, that was kind of the entire point of it, you know, it is an impression of real life. Joey here is not attempting to replicate the image verbatim exactly how it is. Mm -hmm. She's drawing an impression of it. And I think that's what was amazing about that movement at the time, where you had a lot of um, um, artists painting in studios, very fixed set, posed and everything. Whereas with Impression Movement, they just went out, set their canvases out and just drew. And you, you know, open. you've got, say you're painting the sunset, you've got mm. what, one hour? Yeah, exactly. Sort of like this live stream, you've only got one hour to, <laughs> <laughs> to do an image. And it kind of sets, it sets a oh, yeah. of speed to what you have to do. And I guess it does, seeing what you're doing now, reflects in your, in your art because it's not precise in a way. No. You know, you're creating shapes ultimately and uh, building the composition based around these shapes. Um, and I love that. I've always loved that about the Impressionist movement because it's, and each artist has its own take on it. And I, I do find that your style is, is very akin to that, actually. Why, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Um, if, for those of you that are wondering what I'm doing at the moment, I am working on a layer underneath 
the uh, window layer, the green layer. So you can, as you can see, um, the blue is underneath. So I can draw these leaves and it all remains outside, which is quite nice because I feel like I'm working in a very 3D way. Oh, that's quite cool. Yeah, because yeah. you kind of like building layers. Yeah, so you've got, there. and I can go outside and draw <laughs> the trees. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just mapping in. So what, that. at the moment you're doing, you're using the, a, a brush, you're using a yeah, vector, this, a pixel brush. I can show you, vector, this is a brush, pixel brush. Which is the pencil. Pencil, big pencil. Yeah. I've always liked I've always liked the pencil on the um, on the iPad Pro in terms of fresco as well because kind of changing the angle basically behaves like a pencil. If you shift more of higher angle, you get kind of a nice shape. Yeah. So through it. almost can I can I can I demonstrate that? So yeah, this please. is this is like the with the tip. Yeah. And then this is the side of the brush. How cool is that? So it really that. it mimics real life, I guess. Yes, it really does, and I think that's kind of obviously. Our software is trying to achieve that as much as possible, so kind of we can move into a digital world much more easily like that. So at the moment, what are we doing? We're doing the trees. The trees. So mm. this picture that you took, this, this you must know this person because you're literally taking the picture in front of his face. Can I? Shall we do a shout out? This is my dad. Oh, it's your dad! Oh, amazing, <laughs> amazing. Where is this picture taken? Yo, dad. Um, this is. You know, I don't even know where we are. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Love you know that. when. Uh, uh, I love my dad. He just he he drives us to these restaurants mm -hmm. sometimes, and I just go in the, his car, and then we end up somewhere amazing. And you're ordering breakfast, I assume now. Um, I think we're having lunch. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's Vietnamese. Okay. Actually, I'm trying to look at the menu. <laughs> <laughs> so does your dad go out on these excursions with you a lot? Yeah, you know what? He's. Um, I think my whole family are quite. Food orientated, food orientated, focused. oriented, food focused. I don't know. Um, we got we got the message. Yeah, across. yeah. <laughs> it's basically, the number one requirement of an outing is mm -hmm. like where where are you going to eat. It is actually, I yeah. do find myself being Mediterranean, that my life does revolve heavily around food as Where well. Where do you go for good Mediterranean food? In London, it's quite yeah. good, it's a tricky one, depends what you're looking after. There's some really good stuff in Soho, okay. um, especially Greek things, um, but it just depends what you're looking for, you know, Mediterranean food, Italian food. Mm -hmm. um, there's some really nice places where I live in Brixton. Um, yeah, but it's, it's, always, it's always an important part of the day. I know, like, yeah, so like basically that. we just um, go where the food goes. <laughs> Makes that complete sense. <laughs> Got a question here from Jason Holland. Would there be a way to change the color of a layer? Example, the color of one shape that you already have. So at the moment, you won't be able to, I, I exactly know where Jason is coming from. So you know, in Photoshop, you can change the hue and the saturation of a, of a layer mm. using adjustment. You can't do that in Fresco as of now. What you could do in Fresco is change the blender modes. So say, for example, um, Joey selected one of the layers. You could change the blend mode. Maybe we can show that quickly. Um, oh, yeah. Well, have to Please. <laughs> Uh, so this is what I mean. So Joey can change the blend mode to multiply okay, and that could affect yeah. the color of, um, of what you use. But mm -hmm. you can't directly physically change that. What you could do, if you have a specific shape and Joey drew it vector, she could use the fill tool to fill that in a specific color and change it. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question, Jason. So or I, I, I can, I mean, the, I don't think this answers the question, but I can show, can I show the cool thing that you just taught me? Yes. So say I've colored in this way too dark. Do I press this button? Yeah. I'm holding the little button in the corner, this thing. The contextual button. This thing here. Mm -hmm. And then um, with my other hand, oh, no, I've done it wrong. Use the... <laughs> the <laughs> what happens okay. with that button? So at the moment, she's got the pencil tool selected. Oh, there you go, there you go. So yeah. I'm holding one hand on this thing, and then with the other hand, ooh. She can erase the pen. Exact pencil. So whatever brush you have selected, okay, that that is your brush, and you can be painting and drawing with it. But then, if you press the contextual tool, what will happen is that becomes an eraser. So mm -hmm. you can use it as an eraser texture. Because at the moment, the brush, sorry, the eraser in uh, Fresco, the other option, that one is a harsh eraser. So that's good for fining and fine tuning. Whereas if you use the contextual key, <coughs> pardon me, you would get a much more better textured eraser. Okay, which I quite like. It's great. It's it? Yeah. To, for, for you especially. So how are you finding, right? So you are used to doing everything in real life, especially this coloring in yeah. bit, isn't it? How are you finding it? Um, pretty good. I mean, the, the bottom layer looks like a drawing that I've done in real life. Amazing. 
that I, I say real life, I mean on paper. <laughs> this is also real life. This is real life. We are not virtual, guys. No, we're, <laughs> we're not virtual. We're virtual for everyone watching. But watching we're, yeah. We are actually in the studio yeah. live. We really are. That's why you get these hiccups and people start be saying the wrong things. So hopefully we've not done that yet. But yeah, but yeah. so kind of the color wheel, as you can see, the color wheel Just as thinking, well yeah. at the base. I'm slightly covering it with myself. Joey has been selecting a couple of yeah. colors and she's been going through colors and by saving it. So every time she kind of chooses a new color, and then it picks it up. This is the, the color picker. So say yeah. I want this color exactly. Oh, you need to drag it from Ooh, the center whoops. bit. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Um, then I've highlighted this dark burnt orange. And it's already gone there, yeah. So that's then I can it. pinch a color slightly darker than that orange mm -hmm. um, in order to shade and do a little bit of detail. detail. Ooh, lovely. Yeah. So we're at the moment we're drawing the, is it the waitress and things yeah. like that? Yes. He's just waiting. He's just waiting. Asking the for the order. The order. And then <coughs> same thing again for the, the guy sitting at the table. I'm going to color pick his top mm -hmm. and then pinch a color slightly darker than that. And then go back so we can <clears throat> so you're using the dark colors to kind of define the shapes a little bit more yeah. and create definition and structure to the to, yeah. the to the texture. So those once again they're textures that she's done. We've got another question. Um, in this illustration, uh, will you be able to animate like in Photoshop? Not at this point in time. This is purely to create still images. What you could do though, and I've done it myself and some others have been testing it, there's a couple of ways. So imagine if you draw uh, a character, okay, say a parrot or anything, you could actually then export that as a PSD file, okay? Um, and there's two ways. Either you put it into After Effects and use the Puppet Warp tool to animate it, or you could put it into Character Animator. There's a how-to and you can name the layers specifically, and using motion tracking you can animate your character immediately. So that could be a really interesting workflow that you can look at, um, how to bring your ideas and characters that you draw on Fresco immediately to animate them. Mm. It's quite a cool way to yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. We can't do it, unfortunately, from Fresco. What you will be able to do from Fresco, though, and we'll see at the end um, towards this session, we will be exporting a... Uh, like oh, a quick time lapse. Time yeah, lapse. Time yeah. lapse. I got stuck there for a second, guys. <laughs> yes, so we'd be able to export a time lapse. Um, so now with further detail being on drawing. the front. Yeah. On the front person. Yeah. Shall we see what another brush does? Go for it. So I think this is quite exciting as well because I haven't had this app for long. Okay. So I'm also in, in that stage where I'm learning what I can and can't do. And so how are you finding that? That's actually a really good yeah. point. How do you find the user interface? Was it easy to pick up, difficult, intuitive? What is yeah, it? Yeah, I think I've, I've maybe had this app for maybe a week. Oh, wow. That is really yeah. little. That is so little. Um, so this is what I've learned so far. Amazing. And you're still teaching me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Doing my best. But you know, it's it's incredible what you've picked up and already like knowing your art style, I can see immediately. Ooh, that's oh, what's going a mistake, on there? But <laughs> we go back. We got rid of it. Incidentally, guys, you know, you could if if um, Joey wanted to alter the uh, properties of the brush, she could press the the button over there, and we can see you could kind of change uh, at the at the bottom of the left hand menu. Yeah. So you could you could see all the other properties that you'd expect. Um, to see. So we've got another question from Jason. Can you save a fresco file keeping the layers when brought into Photoshop? Actually, that's a brilliant question. So let's talk about file formats. Everyone's excited, most exciting Woo! topic, file formats, <laughs> great. <laughs> no, but yeah. it's actually really good. Actually, that is one of the best things about, uh, about Fresco. So at the moment, what Joe is creating, this working document, okay, is a uh, CPSD. It's a cloud PSD. So actually, it's already a Photoshop file. So uh, when Photoshop on iPad comes in later this year, you'll be able to open, this file would already exist. So if you load that Photoshop file, it will already be there. And all the layers that Joe is creating as they are, they would appear in that Photoshop file. Yeah. Okay, so the layers are retained exactly the same. Mm -hmm. The only thing, though, is obviously Joe is just painting here. She's not naming, giving layers specific names. So when if, if you are um, uh, one of those designers who love everything type D, I'm not. My layers usually are a massive mess. Same. Um, <laughs> you'd go through all of that and rename it in Photoshop. Um, you can't do that as of yet in. Um, um, fresco. Also, another thing about the layers, which is quite cool, if you look on the side of every layer, there's little symbols 
symbols there. For example, the half moon there, yeah. the half circle, sorry. That means that's a mask layer. The one with this, the, this that, that, that one there, yeah. The one over there, it means it's a pixel layer or and the one, and you, don't, you don't go vector, you got the image layer there. Yeah. So all of them have kept little icons there. So that means, especially if she draws using a vector brush, that you'll get a smart object when you open it in Photoshop, which in turn, as you all know what smart objects are, you can open in um, Illustrator and make amends to the paths, okay? So that's a really nifty way if you want to create typography, for example, um, really nice handwritten typography in Fresco that you can, can edit in Illustrator mm -hmm. then, okay? Um, so hopefully, Jason, that answers your question. So where are we? Oh, I love the fact that we've got the color of the jacket yep. building, this coming together really nicely. So do you always draw on the go? Yeah, I always try and make sure I've got my um, sketchbook mm -hmm. and some pens and pencils in my bag. But recently, now I've got the the apps on mm. the iPad. Um, it's much lighter than yeah. carrying a bunch of paper, paper <laughs> and pencils and whatnot. So now I think this is quite good to take my bag and if I've got an idea, I can mm. just jot it down super quick. Um, and, and it works the same. It does work the same. Yeah, it does yeah. work the same. It works the same. Well, ultimately, at the end of the day, what you what behind the creative idea, sorry, behind the piece, sorry, is the creative idea, you know, and that technique and your skill is still coming yeah. through here. So changing media doesn't re does it really matter, you think, in a way, unless you try to achieve something really specific with that medium? No, yeah, of course. And also, if you're if you still want to do something on paper, you can get the idea down here mm -hmm. and then take That's it a home good point, yeah. and you can just use this as your notebook. Yep. This is basically like a notebook with endless pages. <laughs> That's a really good way to describe it, it yeah. <laughs> Love so that. then I can just like do this and then refer to it as I draw it. Nice. That's really good. Back at home, I, yeah. I actually, funnily enough, I tend to do that as well myself. Use this, can I come up with an idea, sketch it quickly, at least I know I've got it there. It's yeah. on, on paper, although it's not really. But that's the point it, yeah. at this point. So what is this kind of like most fascinating place, okay, that you have uh, been in terms of, you know, drawing these things on the go in terms of the world, maybe? Mm. Um, I was I was quite lucky last year to travel to a few places. Um, Brazil was one of them, okay. where I was in this little town where nobody really spoke English. Um, and the fact that I was approaching people and drawing mm -hmm. was a great way to start conversation. And also it was the, ba the conversation between us mm. was the drawing and we could communicate through they the... They did not speak English or any other like or language that you could communicate And with. I don't speak Portuguese. Oh no! <laughs> um, so we had some difficulty, but I was drawing and a bunch of little kids came over mm -hmm. and I just started this like impromptu drawing class with oh, them. Oh wow! Like, I gave them paper. No way! And then pens and then they were drawing pictures and I was like, oh, you've drawn a shoe. Okay. And they would be like, shoe. <laughs> oh my so, goodness. I mean, pictures are, they they work so well. Well, a picture is a thousand words at yeah. the end of the day, yeah. guys. So yeah. that's incredible. That must have been a really lovely experience. It also kind of like really makes your, not art, but just it's such a different way, you know, of using art to communicate with people in a way, in this instance anyway, because there was I no language so. barrier. Yeah, I think so. And it's, as well, it's just a really great way to remember a trip is to go home and then look at all the images that you can't replicate at home because no. you actually went to this place and you tried the food and you felt the rain and mm. you know it's it's a special way to capture so as you said like you paint with your entire senses basically because yeah. yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of comes through in your work basically um, uh, but yeah it's uh, it's very it's um, it's a very interesting art style in a way and and as we said it's a kind of an impression of real life. Do you find yourself exploring specific themes though, or is it literally just about um, life in general? Um, I think it is just life in general, but in capturing life, I'm mm. also capturing um, people and the way they interact with our environment, mm -hmm. um, the, the way they interact with each other. If you live in somewhere that's a busy city like London, mm. you have people going past you, rushing past, rush hour, rush hour. <laughs> non-stop <laughs> movement of people. That hateful moment in the morning and the evening, but you, I guess you find inspiration Yeah, in just that. sitting wow. on, the, on the train, even though it's hectic and it's, you could have a panic about it. <laughs> um, you also get to have a glimpse into loads of people's uh, 
lives mm. and capturing a drawing of a person on their commute and they're just eating a sandwich oh, wow, at the okay. train station. Um, you open up a whole story and, or a narrative about them. That's really inspiring to me. That's lovely. Have you ever had any trouble with people who are like, stop drawing me, don't draw stop drawing me. me. Well, I mean, you can't really ask someone to stop drawing you because Oh. It, I mean, it's not the same as taking a picture. No, no, I think people not. are a lot more relaxed about someone drawing them. Yeah, rather than... Yeah. Doing that and taking <laughs> a picture. I guess it's true because obviously it's still not going to be a direct replication of the yeah, person. Yeah, exactly. But like, have you ever had any encounter where someone kind of like wanted to see what you're doing or wanted to pick like a copy of the picture at some point? You know, also simple mm. curiosity, you know. Um, not really. Oh, wow. I think people tend to mind their own business in life. I guess so. I guess people so. <laughs> are just so focused on, on, on their own existence. <laughs> I, guess, I, guess, I guess if I saw you doing that, I would be so completely all over it. <laughs> it's like, ooh, yeah. what are you doing? What are you drawing? You know, I just want to get, get a little bit of uh, interesting what you thought. This is this all of it is. Mm, what so we, am I doing the table? Let's okay. Sorry. Oh, you're doing, no, no, I'm just, I'm just like doing you do the, the table. table. Yeah. Yes. So we're halfway through um, the uh, show today. Um, and we, we call, what would you say, like we're kind of halfway through the picture? Actually, I think we are. We yeah. Are, yeah. That looks about a halfway done picture. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I reckon. I love how the textures are blending in with all the other brushes that you've yeah. put on. Really, really like this, that. Let's get the floor in. Mm. That feels about right. Yeah, that fills it. Yeah. Um, um, interestingly enough as well, because you're creating a bit of perspective with the piece in a way, yeah. do you tend to use shadows as well? or Because your images are quite flat as mm -hmm. well. Um, uh, would you say that's a correct assumption or? That they're the flatness, pretty you, flat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it kind of creates kind of depth of, of things. You, you kind of lose a little bit of that in a way. Um, yeah, I, I quite like the, the way that an image isn't real. Okay. So I, I, I do kind of enjoy that flatness, but I like putting shadows in. But shadows that maybe don't necessarily make sense. I mean, ah. you know when you think of a drawing, you mm -hmm. think this is the light source, and yeah. this is, I kind of like making faux shadows. Ah. Shadows that aren't, aren't where they yeah. should be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, can, oh, nice. Question. Yes, go Can for I it. do this straight line thing with, uh, with this eraser tool? Um, no, oh. you won't be able to. Oh, oh but I can do it with, um, so, with say I, brush. so say I'm drawing with this, this yes. um, brush. If I draw this hold line it, here yeah, yeah. and I hold it, oh, okay, so it snaps. <laughs> it snaps, exactly. Obviously, it's not because of the brush itself. It has texture on it. It's, it's not perfectly clean, you mm. see, but if you wanted a cleaner line. But I quite like that. Yeah, it's quite Let's nice. Move it exactly, down. yeah. <clears throat> so it goes there. So what, what um, um, Joey has just done, she's just ho held, they do you want to show it again to them? Maybe oh no, I'm going to do a demonstration on, in the middle of the page. Yes. So this is my line, oh. and then it snaps. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to do it again. This is so fun. I hold it down, and, and it snaps. snaps. And she can move it around as well, so oh, yeah. she, she keeps hold of it, snaps, and move and then it. And move it around. Ah, exactly. So that allows you to create really nice straight lines, especially if you're using a pencil and you want to do a grid lines and things like that, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to perspective, you know, perspective lines always mm -hmm. helps. Put that in a separate layer and then you can remove it, you know, mm -hmm. rather than have to erase it or yeah. be worried that it's not going to show up again. Um, Ooh. What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> Too much of a thick line, okay. Yeah, that looks about right. Have you changed brushes now to uh, another one? You don't use a pencil. I'm no. using a hard, hard pastel. pastel. Mm, do you use pastels in real life? Um, I use, yeah, like a sort of crayon mm. type pastel. Okay. Um, but also, pastels in real life are smudgy and mm -hmm. can get everywhere. So it's quite nice to still get that texture, but without the the mess. Mess. <laughs> <laughs> the, are, you, are you actually? The residue. Speaking, speaking of messes, how, where, as, a, as an artist and a painter, do you get messy? I'm super messy. I can't control it. Do you have a studio then? I, so I used to, but now I'm, now I'm just working from my room, mm. which means I can get it messy. So how do you cope with that? Um, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, it's kind of a problem because every, every time someone comes around, they're, they're like, you can't get into your bed because I just have <laughs> stuff all, I crawl into the side and I've got um, ca like canvases and pencils and stuff laid over. 
it's, mm, it's quite, <laughs> I'm just revealing all of my... Um, oh, well, this, so. is what, like, this, this is what this is yeah, all about, yeah. you know, bearing yourself. My soul. So, so do you, because you obviously use different media, though, yeah. I guess it get, does get kind of complicated a little bit um, um, in terms of, yeah, I mean, what, what, is, kind of what is your favourite medium to use, really? Um, I, I quite like quick, easy to carry medium. So I like okay. gouache, which okay. is oh, a mix gouache. between watercolour and... Acrylic? Oi, no, acrylic, yeah. I think it is acrylic, yeah, yeah. It so is. it's the happy medium it's between. Happy medium. But I've got um, I got that, but in pan form. Okay. So it's dry, and I add water, um, and I can carry that in my bag. Lovely. That's really nice. And then again, like pencils, crayons, um, anything that that lets me carry it around. Pretty easy. And make your life easy as well. Because I guess in London it's quite hard to kind of, and it's expensive to have studios, you know, because mm. um, you're renting out a space essentially above everything else and your current rent as well. It just adds up. I yeah. mean, I do also, because I, I paint in my room as well, funnily enough, and mm -hmm. I find that much more relaxing as well, because it's my own space. Yeah. Do you know, and I can really relax and just Get Play your own music. Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. I guess equally you could do that in a studio, but most of the time you're sharing studios, especially in London, yeah. so you have to be careful what sort of music, and I do not want to subject people to my taste in music. Why? What kind of music are no, you No, we're not going to? into that. Hard, hard <laughs> I listen, rap? No, no, I, li I listen to very cheesy pop. Oh. Yeah, but not everyone likes that. That's true. Not everyone likes that, and they call me commercial, but you know, that's who I am. I think, <laughs> you know what, I love a good pop song, but I, my, my problem is if I like a song, I'll listen to it 20 times. That's I'm the same, mm. exactly. I can leave it on loop and repeat. I do drive the people I live with crazy as a result of that. But you know, that's my prerogative. But it's fine. <laughs> that's it's their fine. problem. That's their problem. They don't have the same good taste that we do. I wouldn't call my taste good, good taste. taste. So I'm a bit mindful. No, joking aside, I am mindful. I am mindful with that. So, so, so what is your sort of music taste? Uh, I like a bit of everything. Okay. Genuinely, I if it's good, I like it. Mm. Um, but I'm not a, really a fan of metal, like mm. very hardcore. Do you find, because I find this as well, if I'm doing a specific image with a specific tone. Why then you to, want that heavy sound? No, 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 just I was gonna wondering, like if the cho you, do you find yourself when you choose a track to play, does that affect your kind of the choice of like, of music? The way, oh you know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, in a way. Mm. Recently, I've been listening to podcasts. Okay. So oh, then it doesn't. So it doesn't, yeah. So it doesn't dis distract me. And you just let, let that sit in the background whilst you're kind of mm -hmm. carrying away. Yeah. That's so interesting. That's interesting. I actually find I do the same thing, but I put sometimes TV shows on. So things I've seen okay. already. Yeah. Things I've seen already. So I, part of me kind of doesn't need to engage with what's going on, but I'm still kind of half listening, mm -hmm. you know. It also makes me feel like I'm not alone in the room. So there's something about that as well that goes on. Oh, so the, you're drawing, we're onto the face now. Yeah, we so what I'm face. doing on the face is, I think I, I'm trying, um, and we're seeing if this works, is using a live brush on, um, on a new layer over a pixel layer. Yeah. So then the face, the facial features will bleed a little bit, mm -hmm. and it, I don't know, it might it might look a bit more expressive, should, a bit more interesting. It should bleed. Is it the watercolor brush that you're using? Um, yes, yes, indeed, indeed, it is. The so yeah, brush. we're doing a little bit of shading on that. So Hitesh Sonar say hi, Joey. Love your work. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. And I want to know how you choose your color palette. Um, how do I choose my colour palette? Well, I think you can see from this image uh, that it's quite bright and I think it's just intuitive. I don't really know how to explain too much, but it is a very intuitive thing. And it's a lot about practising, mm -hmm. working with different colours and just using, trusting your eye. Um, one thing that I really like doing is placing two colors next to each other that are really opposite. Mm -hmm. So I think this this bright lime green contrasts with this uh, sort of sweeter, how do you describe this, this pinky, rosy? It's kind of a rosy, whiny red. Yeah, so they're very, very different to very each other. Different to each other. So I think contrasts 
that's that's some, something I'm really drawn to. In terms of color yeah. theory, though, does when you contrast things, does help lift a piece yeah. up because it just doesn't become it removes the flatness of the image. I guess mm. and it allows you to define the shapes a little bit more, as we can see. Yeah. We're, we're looking at the right guys because we have a monitor in front of us. Oh yeah, we we're, like we're like gazing off into the distance. Of the distance. <laughs> it's not us being dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> it's not us being dramatic. There's a reason like, that. There's why, a reason for that. Why <laughs> do I use color the way I use color? Although she does that really well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's okay. a dramatic nature. Look I at wonder. That. She wonders why she uses this color. No, we're, then we're looking at a screen. We're looking at a no screen. Worries, we are guys. Screen. No worries, guys. No worries. We're, we're not, not losing it. No. <laughs> so actually going back to the drawing. Yes. yes. <laughs> going back to the drawing. I'm back, down. back down. Back down. Okay. The drawing. But it's true. It's true. I love, I love the choice of lime green. Because actually, if you look at the reference picture, it's Can not I do it yet. Quick? Let's do a quick. Let's check, what we, let's check where we are. So we can see actually you've the changed. The colors are different. Very different, which is great. Because actually, she's not trying to replicate real life. She's doing an interpretation of real life. Yeah. And that feels much more nicer, real life. You know, I love if life was actually full of those beautiful colors. But, you know, especially living in London, it tends to be a bit it gray. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't work out that way. Do you find yourself actually in talking about clothes and colors? I notice like a lot of people in London don't wear enough colors. I'm... I mean, you're an exception. You're an ex I am usually an exception, although today I decided to go demure. So obviously, Joey yeah. takes the limelight. And well, everything. I mean, talking about um, contrast, mm. this, I'm literally wearing what my drawing is wearing, like mm -hmm. a reddish colour. And behind me is a green screen. Which you which guys is, can't see. Which you can't see, see, but that's kind of what I've done in the image. Yes, so you maybe have, I was. Actually subliminally subconsciously, subconsciously seeping that in yeah. and putting into your image i love that yeah. thankfully the green screen is not picking up that green because that would be a very awkward gap no, in the would. image wouldn't it but i think that's also one thing that i really love i love showing um uh, being colorful in the the things that i wear mm -hmm. i really like wearing all one color so say i've got like a green top i'll match it with green trousers and the green bright green though it will be like oh nice yeah yeah, yeah. Nice, bright bright nice, bright nice um because I think, you know, colour is needed in mm. in a very concrete grey city. Yeah, that's very true. And also we don't have yeah. a lot of greenery in this city. I mean there is. So actually. you get patches. You get patches, but I think even in general the colours are not very bright. And let's face it, the weather in London is not exactly great either. So it tends to be a shade of grey in some shape or form. <laughs> so yeah. you don't get that lively sun you get in other parts of the world. But you know, we I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I love wearing bright colours. Um, I like yellow. I do like wearing yellow. Quite You're a, a yellow bit. yellow fan. I um, it's not. I to be fair, I just like bright colors in general. Um, uh, and uh, my friends tease me as being one of the specific Pokemon, which I'm not going to mention. When I wear yellow, I look like one of them. <laughs> they say, but let's not get into that. But yeah, it's uh, it's one of my favorite colors. Do you have a favorite color? Is it quite difficult to ask for an artist, isn't it? Um, I don't have a favorite favorite color, mm -hmm. but I have colors that I'm drawn to. Um, you know, as my mood changes. Sure. I think in this wintry, um, autumny sort of time, I really like autumnal browns, Is oranges. Is why you went for that kind of red color over there? Yeah, I think so. Warm, warm palettes. Mm. That's that's what it's I like. It's a season of warm colours. I, I do it love is. autumn for that reason. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, the picture actually you took is it recent picture or something? This is recent. This mm -hmm. is recent. Okay, cool. Well, it explains why also the cut the leaves oh, that are lovely. starting to kind of yes become that lovely autumnal okay, colour. I'm going to pinch this dark colour and do oh, the hair. hair of that person. I've been neglecting. The people in the, the back. Well, oh, you have been focusing on your dad, you know. Yeah. He's an important person. I, I, I hope he's right. watching. <laughs> have you given him the link to watch? I know, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Dad, shout out to Dad. And he's like at, at home asleep, probably. <laughs> well, he can always catch this on demand later. Yeah, it'll still be, exactly. it'll still be on YouTube. So you can you can force him to watch it later. <laughs> <laughs> sit sit, sit down, down and watch it. An, watch an hour of me <laughs> Just talking. talking. <laughs> so, I've got enough of that already. Aww. I don't need any more. <laughs> I'm no, sure he wouldn't mind. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Um, actually, I was going to ask you, looking at your drawing now, do you, uh, do you do any commercial work? And I know you do some commercial work and you've worked with other brands before, such as Nike, The Beers, Smithson, and even The Tate, mm -hmm. actually. Um, how about exhibitions? Have you had yeah. any exhibitions recently? Um, this summer, I just did a group show at Unit London. Oh, okay. And that was showing a body of 
of uh, drawings that I had done when I, I was in France over okay. summer. So it was a, just like a celebration of summer. Okay. Um, we we're hoping to show you an example, um, but it's not coming up on screen. It's okay. We can. Oh, hey! there it is! <laughs> yeah. Fantastic! Fantastic! Cool. <laughs> so that's lovely. Look, I love, yeah. I love the color. Color, especially, I specifically like that one. There is such a nice piece. Mm. Yeah. It's. I was just about to say this. The colors that I've used in these images mm. are are quite cold. I think. It's very cold in comparison to the drawing that I'm doing now, I reckon. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. It's kind of very kind of on the grease and on the blues. They yeah, take it's, over. it's a Even colder though, side. But having said that, though, you do, as, as Joey said later, chose a really nice red for the woman there. Mm. It really creates a strong contrast with the piece. Yeah. And that allows you kind of, it pulls her out. It pulls her out of the image. Whereas the woman on the back, she's once again within that color palette. Sinking back a little sinking bit. Sinking back a little bit. Like she's wearing the blue, yeah. so she kind of fades into, obviously, you were heroing that color there. I also love the shadow you created in that one with the red. Yeah. It's a very interesting choice of color. I love that because it just... But that's, I guess that's kind of what I was saying about faux shadows, mm. like um, creating shadows and, and coloring certain bits that aren't necessarily there. Yeah, But exactly. you want to emphasize it, so you, you bring it out into your own image. It's lovely, just creates, gives the image a bit more direction and perspective, actually it really draws yeah. your eye to the woman in the piece. So going back to our drawing, how, how are we feeling about it? We've got about 15 minutes left. <gasps> really? We, yes, we do. We do. Okay. We do have 15 minutes left, but it seems like it's coming together. There's no stress in finishing the drawing today. <laughs> we never managed to finish the drawing because I'm yapping about. The I'm entire, also. Yeah, we're, yeah. You know, this, by the way, it's the first time we met today. <laughs> but we've met well, we spoke, we spoke yeah. previously, but we, we feel like we, we, we clicked, so you know, we can give you guys a really good show um, today. Um, so we're kind of finishing we're, golf. Yeah, we're going in with, with the, the facial features. Facial features. So now you're using, again, a pixel brush. So you find a combination of um, the... Yeah, uh, so I think that's what's sticking out for me, is that I, I quite like um, the live brushes for a bit of mm. bleeding, mm -hmm. but then I don't have to wait for... A, paint to dry is I can I can just jump onto a new layer mm. with the pixels and then there's another in. feature actually whilst you're talking about drying if you choose the just if you select the live brush for example yeah, yeah and you press those three dots at the bottom these yeah, it says dry layer oh no you have to paint if you paint on something you paint. okay so say um paint yeah uh, I just do a yeah and if you select those three dots gives you the option to dry the layer at the bottom, yeah? So that oh, means so that then it, it will won't bleed. bleed as much, yeah. So that's a really cool nifty trick I'm that you learning. can do. Well, you know, <laughs> Joey has only had the app for a week. She's been trying the app for a week. We set her a challenge once again. Let's remind you, this is a, this is a kind of a new thing for Joey, which is drawing something completely yeah. digitally. You know, she, she has pulled in textures, but we'll allow that obviously because it's, it's still digital, but she's creating an image completely um, using Fresco, which is quite exciting. We do actually, speaking of media, mm -hmm. we do have a question from Kai. Joey, do you like using watercolor? <laughs> which medium did you find most difficult mm. to learn? I like using watercolor. Mm -hmm. I like the, the bleed of it. I think the, the hardest materials for me would probably be um, oil. Mm. Because that's a long, long dry time. It does, that that will not work with your kind of approach, mm -hmm. the quickness. For the quick, yeah. yeah. Um, I've recently been trying to push myself and learn how to use oil, but mm -hmm. it's still, yeah, a really tricky one. It will be interesting for you to use it on fresco because it will be very powerful. Like I started, I'm, I'm the same, I find all very difficult to use because I like the yeah. fact that acrylics dry very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but recently I have been uh, playing with oil. And not real oil, because also because uh, as we said, bo we both paint in our room. It's very hard to uh, to use oil in yeah. your room. I remember once I used it. I, I accidentally got a little bit on my elbow here, and because it doesn't dry, I got it all over the house. There you I go. I didn't realize. So it's a messy medium in itself, but it does create beautiful artwork and beautiful textures and really beautiful blending modes. Mm -hmm. But it's really nice that we kind of brought it onto fresco, and I I'm, I use it here. So there may be something you could look into the future uh, using oil. A little bit more because we our engine really replicates the way the oil colors blend in together without the mess. <laughs> so, uh, so how far off are we with the image now? Um, okay, I think we should put in some tables. Yes, yes, definitely. Put, make it feel a bit more like a restaurant. Yeah. So, if I remember correctly, that's what uh -huh. I do. I hold it and then it snaps. Yeah, it has snapped. And then I hold it. 
and um, snacks. Okay. How useful is that tool? Super useful. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's nice. colour it in. And then let's put a table here. And then it snaps. So this is your, you know, you're drawing your father's table. Indeed. Indeed. You've changed the brush again to another to another type of pixel brush now. Incidentally, this is a pixel, yeah. yeah. Incidentally, you, with Fresco, as I mentioned before, you do get access to about eighteen hundred Kyle Webster brushes. Which how incredible is that? If you have an Adobe subscription, so I have to caveat that, guys. <laughs> um, in terms of, um, do you uh, do you find that you have any specific modern artists that you find in, in like for recent, like yeah, yeah, who are still alive? Let's put it that way. <laughs> I I like. I, I mean, I'm trying to mm. be inspired by everything, but I really like f uh, film directors. Okay, oh, that's even more interesting. Yeah, I really like watching films and being inspired by um, the film shots, mm. the um, perspectives they use, the color palettes. I think it's a, it's a nice way to be inspired in a different way. Um, because obviously the medium means that I won't be replicating a film director. Well, yeah, especially yeah. your approach to art because of real life. Yeah, yeah. But I guess it does make sense a little bit that you kind of inspire, really inspire from moving footage because essentially that is what you're doing with your current work. Yeah. Isn't it? You're kind of picking that up and just taking still really, like you would take a still mm -hmm. from a movie. Would you ever be considered like doing that? Like if you saw a shot of a movie, you absolutely loved it. Would, have you ever recreated something like that? I have, I have, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Can but you tell us what, what movie it was or? Um, I've, I mean, I've done it to a few films. There's one film that I would love to make artwork from. Mm. Um, and like I was talking about it earlier, mm. um, is this, it's this film called The Handmaiden. Mm. And the director is... Oh, the um, Japanese, Japanese? Um, uh, Korean. Korean, sorry, yes, Korean. The director's called Park Chan-wook. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get it's back. It's a recent film, well, isn't it? Pretty, three, four pretty years, recent. Three or four years yeah, ago, yeah. But that, that for colours, um, for plotline, for yeah. the way they've shot it, it's so inspiring. So, yeah. It that, was, it was an incredible movie because they had... They, actually, it was nice. They used these really dark uh, materials, especially on the posters, I remember her, mm -hmm. with her beautiful headdress yes. as well, with the red in it. It was very powerful, very powerful piece. So, uh, have, you, have you done that already or, or you want no, to No, I want to. Oh, you want to. You want to. So that could be a really interesting project, you know. Coming soon. Do you, <laughs> coming soon. I'm assuming you have some sort of social media, um, uh, social media handles as social media accounts. Do you tend to put a lot of your work up there? Um, I try to, yeah. I try to keep it busy and consistent so mm. people can see what I'm what I'm up to but I also just like sharing fun things that I'm interested in That's and nice yeah do you do you find yourself ever doing kind of like talks or events where you kind of show people how to draw and illustrate yeah um, this is the first thing that I've done like this, though. Oh, so this cool. That's cool. So, how are you finding it? <laughs> Not too terrible. You know what? It's quite hard to to draw and also be aware of like what you're what you're what, saying. What I'm asking you. Yeah. I no, it, no. What I'm. Oh, are you saying? I feel I like I'm. I could be saying anything, but you know, it's it's good good learning experience. Well, you know, you're never stopping you from doing it again. I guess. Yeah. Then. Yes. Exactly. And now I've done it. I can so, do it again. Yep, yep. Once done, you know, the br broken the camels. Yep. I don't know what the expression is. Let's try not to use it. <laughs> and, and now I know how long it takes me to do a drawing on this iPad. How, com how does it compare to uh, real life? Um, you know what? It's a completely different beast. Is it? Because I um, am learning how to work with the layers. Ah. So, I, yeah, I think it will take a while for me to master it, but mm. it's got more opportunities. Although to, given what you've got yeah. so far, it's inc very incredible. As we said, like you've only been using this for a week. So, I mean, I'm impressed. Obviously as an artist, <laughs> you know, you know your own standards yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and artists are their own worst critics sometimes. So obviously, um, but it's, it's very impressive how, how far you've got and how quickly you've picked up this tool. I think really. give me, give me a few months. Okay. okay. And then I'll, I'll, have got it. I've, I'll have it on my tool belt. Nice. Yeah. Maybe we're gonna have Joey back, guys, and she can show us what she have been up, she has been up to using Fresco. Yeah. 
you know. Um, so we're finishing off. We're getting close to uh, the uh, the end. The, the end. Oh, you're, do, you're drawing the um, the shutters now. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, just adding a, a few details. Obviously, I haven't managed to finish no. the whole image, but it gives you a sense, a of, sense of yeah, yeah. where do we you, are. Do you when you do your pieces? Do you tend to kind of use uh, omit details a lot and simplify it? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, okay. And I think it's quite nice if there's if it's not completely 100% finished mm -hmm. because then you can tell it was done. Really done by someone. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. There totally. and on the spot because if something's over labored, I think I think it can get quite muddy and it can get too worked into. And I, I think when I first started doing drawings, I was very much um, so, like I was doing that a lot. Okay. And learning to undo and let myself be free and and not force yourself not I need to, to finish this mm -hmm. and be happy with where you got to yeah and in a way i guess especially because just like if people move on or you have to leave the place it kind of sets a timer and i sometimes i like uh, with some creatives a job is never finished and people kind of are always working on it on the go and on and and mm -hmm. as you said like but have you learned, it's a learn, it's a, more experience teaches you how to let go and know when to stop playing with the images. Because sometimes as you get, you can ruin it just by keep on working on it, basically. So is it time and experience or is it just an instinct? Time is, is definitely a big part of it. Part it's of it. time plus mm. instinct. Okay, interesting. That's very interesting. Because obviously, how long have you been drawing now? Um, professionally speaking. Professionally? Um, for a few years, a few years. yeah. Three years. And how um, do you get like do exhibitions? How many times do you do, you do once big one once a year or a couple a year? Um, I try and at least do one. I mean, you set out with the goal to do lots of exhibitions, mm -hmm. but then your time gets eaten up by work. Yeah. So I try try and at least do one physical showing. Yeah. Of work, um, but hopefully next year. Do you have any advice for people trying to get into fresco, but also just drawing, you know? Um, I think it's to not be afraid to play yes. and not be afraid to be a bit daring and try something that sounds a bit outrageous. Like, on, pa on paper, mm -hmm. <laughs> pardon the pun, <laughs> <laughs> on paper it sounds like a silly idea to just take a picture of of a piece of paper and then use it in the image. But I think it turned out pretty well. I mean, look how it turned out. I, mean, I especially, yeah. especially love the guy in the blue shirt, that especially the detail you've added to it. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Really I think, he, I think it pops out. It pops out, really pops out. So, yeah, really I think try, try things that sound silly. And um, it's better to make something that divides opinion than something that people are like, oh, this is nice. Well, yeah, I guess that's the point of art is to create discussion around yeah. it, you know. Yeah. If, be, if people ha hate your works, clearly you're doing something right. That's that I always yeah, say Yeah, I that. think divisive work is good. I think so, <laughs> I think so. Um, uh, but also the great thing about what Joey is saying, especially with something like Fresco, is just go out and try it. I think a lot of people stop themselves from trying because they're afraid to do it. Yeah. Um, and I think fear, I think, is the number one killer of creativity. But mm -hmm. also, in a way, if you pu pu push past, that fear it can lead to some amazing things um, um, let's see if we um, how many we've got three minutes left before we finish <laughs> okay shall we do a quick time-lapse okay exports yeah. let's quite cool let me just color in this chair color in this chair really quickly. quickly quickly color in this chair so as Joey finished just said what we're gonna do now is we're, well but yes, let's assume she finished the piece. Um, um, yeah, you set, you set up the... I'll set, I'll set it up, we've got a few minutes. So <laughs> as I assume we finished the piece, and uh, now you want to wanna share it on social media because everyone wants to see what you've what amazing piece you've done. There's a couple like, of ways... Hey guys, to, work hey in guys, progress. Work in progress, work in progress. Um, and there's also, that's good advice. Nowadays people love seeing artists show their work in progress because mm -hmm. it's all about the process, not just about the finished piece. So it's also a really happy to do. Um, so yeah, so we keep flicking. Say I've finished that. <laughs> yeah. So she's going <laughs> to. This is as, as much as we've got. <laughs> we've got um, so we yeah. are going to click this one. Uh, no, that one. This yeah. one. That one. Publish and export. And we're going to do a time lapse. So it takes a second to load. Yeah, let's see how that looks. Hold, please. Yeah, there you go. It will record <gasps> everything that she's done. So it's 
every even just show every time she shows you the image for example that's going to be picked up but as we can see that is joey's handiwork in progress so for example that's probably sick. probably when when she stops when the ca camera stops is when she was talking to camera and she was not kind of working but we can clearly see oh yeah you can, you can see like this point probably we're chatting um, um and yeah look we're finishing all of that it's so mesmerizing i love looking looking these like it these looks things. like the computer's drawing it it does it does but it's me it is you i love how adding the blue kind of gets it gives that definition yeah. as well yeah very so that's cool. it really so what you could do now um you could export that as a mov and save it onto your um, um iPad and then you can kind of use upload to, upload to Rush. social media yeah so Joey thank you so much for everything and uh, it's been a pleasure having you thank you for having me hope you guys had a good time and see you next week for another Adobe Creative Collab have a lovely weekend bye bye